community. Um, I'll let you guys introduce ourselves to the world. So let's start with you, Adrian. My name is Adrian Carter, um, co-founder of Let's Do Better. My name is David Rasul Robinson, uh, also co-founder, one third of Let's Do Better. Cool, cool. Appreciate you guys tuning in with us, man. So yeah, let's get into it. Talk to us about how, you know, Let's Do Better just came into the fruition. Um, Dave, you want to kick that off for me? Yeah. Oh, good. I can dive into that. So pretty much LDB came about, originally it started out as Do Better. And then we pivoted to let's do better, but I'll, I'll explain that in a, in a sec. So really it just started out the three of us checking on each other, you know, just well, you know, we've been friends for quite some time. So just checking in on each other's well being over the course of COVID at the beginning of COVID, uh, um, just checking on each other's family, uh, building with each other, you know, weekly. And then that grew into, okay, us seeing what was going on in the country, in the world, um, something that's not new to three black men or any persons of color in this country. So we're like, okay, we know what it is. We, we've we seen, you know, with George Floyd, that's only the most recent iteration of years of uh, maltreatment uh, through various, you know, various situations in place. and. We were like, instead of complaining or posting or whatever, why don't we do something? Do something that where we can be an example, um, use our skills that we've acquired, the three of us uh, from being in the fashion industry in various capacities for at least 10 years and, and doing other things that how can we channel those various skill sets into something that we can come together and do and to offer as, as something that the public can digest and create a dialogue uh, around that, that thing or item or whatever. You know, at the time we created it, we didn't really know what we were gonna do. So it, it all, everything, literally everything has happened organically, step by step. Cool. Hey, we have any those to add? I mean, yeah, to add to that, um... Yeah, I mean, like like David said, we've been in the industry for about 10 years. And I think um, not only just last year through COVID or, or through a lot of just like, you know, um, the civil unrest that a lot of our community's been going through, well, has been going through, let me say that. Mm -hmm. um, it was just like, you know, we've worked these jobs, we made, you know, lots of money for a lot of different people so on in, in, in different capacities. So it's kind of just like, you know, what more can we do? Like, you know, we've acquired all these tools. Um, we've, we've got all this experience. Um, like, how can we not only utilize these tools, but like, how can we affect change in some way? How can we, you know, how can we touch another kid um, who, may have the, who may have had the same desires as we did um, coming into this game, coming into like fashion or the art world, so on and so forth. So like, it just, it, it became a bit more deeper for us. Like it, it's, it was less about, you know, creating a brand so we can make some money, so we yeah. can get rich or so we can put clothing on a wrapper or so on and so forth. It, it was more do about- <laughs> We can do all that, but <laughs> let's do that and also help. Right. Be an example, educate, inform. Sorry. Yeah. To really kick it off, because I mean, like, you know, I think the common the commonality between all of us is that, you know, and, and it's not to bash anybody or do any pocket watching, but we just felt like there's not enough people in our space doing enough. There are people doing things, but they're not doing enough. So like our whole trajectory is selfless it, it it started off about the people you know what i mean so like it's this whole initiative has nothing to do with us and it has everything about everything to do with our history and the communities that, that we come up in you know sure so you know you guys have developed the skills you know experiences and tools that create this so speak on some of like the initiatives you guys have done um to help educate and like you know support the black community because i see you have the learn to swim campaign I remember uh, the books you put together with uh, the museum in Chicago, right? No. Um, no? 
Go ahead, Dave. No, no, it, it wasn't not, not the museum in Chicago. It was uh, the Mocha in Cali, Mocha and, Cali. and the uh, and I believe the ICA in Boston. Yeah. But but specifically speaking on on that project, that was our um, sort of us tackling public school education and education reform, and basically how our history is taught um, to all. And the three of us, we are all avid readers. We grew up in households that uh, fostered reading and learning, and so we nerded out on some of the books we grew up with that weren't prescribed in school, but our parents or parent friends or aunt, you know relatives or whomever were passing to us to make sure we read and we knew of our history, of our worth and our contributions to this country and to this world. Um, in, in addition to that, it was uh, obviously a great deal that we hadn't read and, and weren't exposed to that other people exposed us to. So we thought, why not craft a sort of LDB recommended book list, uh, mm -hmm. titles we read, titles we want to read, titles we all recommend, and not just for Black people to read, not just for Black folks to read, but for all folks to share that, you know, have that exchange of culture and that that sort of sharing of our history and build that, that reciprocity. Because just as much as I love and I want to know and I'm curious about our history, it's the same for all others. We just feel that there's been a disparity as far as the way these narratives have been taught. For sure. You know, to to you know a variety of uh, a variety of people. So the book project was us tackling that, but then we're also fan, fans of furniture, of design, of, um, of 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 history. So we thought, how can we kind of do this project, but not have it be teachy or preachy and kind of add a twist. So we partnered with our friends in, at Lycan and um, we decided to craft a set of bookends around Donald Judd's, uh, the, his wooden chair. We did a, a forward slant chair and a backward slant chair. Mm -hmm. So basically we shrunk those down, made those bookends and crafted a tier system of, um, of packages of three, 10 and I forget what the third tier, I think it may have been on 15 books that were packaged with the tote um, and the booking. So that way it can be something that's functional, it can be repurposed, but it also create that dialogue that you can you know, pass on and share with others. Yeah, I actually have a so I, shelf over there too. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, and that's even more- uh, Actually, you. No, go ahead. You, you wanna, you, my bad, you wanna speak on where those proceeds went though? The, uh, the Carter Center? Yeah, so, and I mean, this goes for every project, you know, there's, there's a cause or something that we want to get after that we want to tackle, um, you know, and for us it's building, it's building a story around it that we can kind of repackage and share with the world so they can kind of take that in, um, in a more contemporary light through our point of view kind of thing. So like um, with the bookends project, you know, while focused on, um, while focused on education reform and Black history, um, we partnered with the, the the Carter. What was it called again? David? Carter Center. The Carter Center um, in um, what's that? Damn, in uh, St. Louis, I believe. Yeah, St. Louis, Missouri. It's out in St. Louis, um, and it's. It's K through 12, I believe, and their whole their whole um, purpose is to incorporate Black history into the school curriculum properly. Like, right. for, so it's not falling just in a, into a February kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. it's Black history being taught all year round. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, like, which is which is something we're 100 percent advocates for. Um, and you know, like David said, like we all read and and. I feel like even with the reading we have done, we're still catching up on a lot of history that we probably missed out on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so this project, even for me, was like huge because it just made, it, it, make, it makes you think back about the t all the time you did spend in school and what you mm -hmm. were taking in and, and, how, 
and how much of it you missed. You know what I mean? So you kind of feel like you wasted a lot of time <laughs> in school, you know, you know, learning about a lot of things that, you know, have absolutely nothing to do with anybody. Right. Literally, literally well, anybody. <laughs> that's even more important today because, you know, with Juneteenth becoming a federal holiday and then it's almost like a contradiction because now they have like in some of the states where it's illegal to teach, you know, about basically like black history and like, you know, right. about a critical race theory. So now you have like programs like yourself where it's like, all right, cool with these mainly like Southern states saying like, you can't, like we're not incorporating this in like, you know, the regular curriculum. Now with these programs like right. you know, together and like these uh, the book projects and stuff, allowing like kids to really educate themselves. Cause you know, at some point everyone's gonna have the conversation when everyone's off from work, you know, off from school because of Juneteenth. So now people have to figure out, oh, how can we get off Juneteenth? What is Juneteenth? And then these books you put together for everybody and have to start digging deep and understand the history and why it's such a big deal. And then uh, last question before we go into your foundation, um, take us through the, the Learn to Swim campaign. So I thought that one was very interesting as well. Oh yeah, that, that actually was one that hit really close to home for myself mm -hmm. because when I was younger, I almost drowned twice um, and for most of my life, I had a real aversion to large bodies of water. Yeah. So <clears throat> basically the Learn to Swim campaign was us looking at, okay, there, there is that joke that black folks can't swim. And, you know, we, we joke amongst, about it amongst ourselves. And it's almost a sort of stereotype among black people, you know, to non-black people. But really, why is this the case? And us kind of once again, asking this question, tossing it around internally, and the three of us taking this deep dive to really look into history and to really find that out. And it was funny because right around when we were finalizing this project and we partnered with Everest Isles, uh, who I'll speak about briefly in one sec, was at the same time, um, Jay had came out in, in, you know, in the barbershop interview with LeBron where he had mentioned um, how he had learned to swim. I believe it was in that interview where he had learned to swim for blue and that that's real. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so basically we partnered with Everest Isles. They make um, swim trunks out of recycled fabric, repurposed fabric. But that's one thing we've always wanted to make sure we, we, we pay attention to in regards to whatever product we're making, packaging, so on and so forth, that everything's considered, is thought out, is as low impact on the earth as it can be. Yeah. Um, so with that, we, we partnered with them and we, we designed a set of swim trunks, uh, custom swim trunks, and uh, this long sleeve tee you see I have on, which is based off of a uh, uh, Art Deco swim campaign, swim poster from New York Park District from the 20s. The original image, uh, I mean, it's kind of kind of difficult to see on this. Uh, this original image was all white swimmers, all white, all white kids in the background, all white swim, uh, swimmers. It was a poster for, for whites only, for white only pools. So with this, we added a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor to it, not to say, you know, we just added some diversity, you know, white, black, beige, brown, okay. et cetera, all colors, exactly. And the shorts, we actually added a few elements of the uh, Pan-African flag. The shorts are mostly black, red toggle and uh, our Pantone evergreen. So we try to kind of slightly tell these stories literally in the product, yeah. but also, but and not people over the head, but also have it be something that people will want to wear. It creates a dialogue, it creates a discussion around mm -hmm. and it raises interest. And, and, and honestly, speaking personally for myself, I love, I mean, I, I love anyone and I appreciate anyone that supports and has supported any of our projects or reposted or whatever, but I love when I see, you know, whether it be our Pan-African flag inspired by David Hammond's New Era or the long sleeve or whatever. I love when I see it on black folks, but also especially non-black folks, because it's just a further breaking down of those walls to hopefully create that dialogue. And it's less about like, oh, we did this, y'all ain't shit, but it's like, I don't know if I can curse on this. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, we did this. Oh, where we did this, you know, y'all ain't, ain't shit. But no, it's like, we know y'all did something, but we did this too. And I know y'all over there, y'all did some things and so on and so forth. That way it becomes more of a dialogue 
and a process of learning and sharing rather than lines drawn in the sand and, and the divisiveness, if you will. Definitely. And even with and even with this project, like, you know, considering the direction that we went in, um, at the end of it, it buys swimming lessons for the underprivileged black youth for the bed size YMCA. Yeah. So like yeah. there's always there's always a connection to some to um, an organization that will uplift and empower you know these stories that we're actually trying to tell you know because they're real the real story you know what i mean for sure and then last question for you guys uh it's probably like the biggest one to me is the the foundation you guys have started as well so take us through that because i remember on the ig close we talked about you know people trying to partner and you know get involved and that's how the foundation came to be so take us through that and like you know the kind of impact it's had uh to date You want me to do that? You you wanna you wanna do that? You wanna die? It's it's all it's whatever. Go ahead, go ahead Dave. You got it. Mm -hmm. Um so so originally, like Adrian said, we started LDB. We didn't, you know, we didn't it originally started out to be a what we internally were calling a philanthropic brand. Yeah. And we make product, you know, we think of a think of a concept or address an issue, think of product or an item or whatever. And every project is different from the last. And then those proceeds, those net proceeds are then donated to a cause that was tied to that, that item or product or, or issue. So we thought for the future to better free us up in regards to the LDB segment, why not create a true fully functioning nonprofit arm of what we do, which is now the Doing Better Foundation. So with that, that frees up LDB a little bit to be that much more nimble to, and, and, and it also frees us up from being strictly a brand because we are, we are more than that. You know, yeah. you know, that's been the lowest hanging fruit because that's what people have seen uh, what's been front facing. But, you know, behind the scenes, we've done other things. You know, it's the product, the consulting, the the, the marketing, the, the various things we do and that we, you know, we've done kind of behind the scenes for, for, uh, for others, um, you know, throughout our time in this business. Yeah. So with, uh, with LDB, those, those products or whatever we generate from that, we can then use the Doing Better Foundation to directly donate to smaller causes, smaller issues, smaller foundation that may, for example, receive funding less than $100,000. They may not be on the radar for larger entities or larger uh, nonprofits that are uh, specified in what they do. Mm -hmm. With us being a little, you know, smaller, but a little bit more nimble, we can address, kind of plug those holes and address those causes uh, yeah. where it makes sense. That was it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, great way to put it, especially like creating a, a separate space to really have all the, the net proceeds and the donations in one spot where you could really like, you know, just allocate and distribute the monies to different, you know, causes that are supporting the black and brown community. And you know, that's something that we at JD Sports and Fresh, I appreciate, you know, this really started last year in Juneteenth um, to create conversation. So did we. See, stars align. <laughs> And just to really create dialogue and conversation around, you know, what's going on within the black community and how, you know, we could do better and, you know, put people in positions to really like, you know, service the community. So with that said, you know, we'd like to donate $10,000 to your foundation. You guys are doing amazing work, especially with uh, the books and really like tackling some of these stereotypes for black people. And just it being really education based and that being even more important today with like, like I mentioned earlier with like, you know, some states like getting rid of like race theory in classrooms so no one could really talk about slavery and, you know, the things wow. black people went through and like, and that's all part of American history. So definitely kudos to you guys and the work you've been doing. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. you so much, man. Thank you for having us. Um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, of course, of course. And then, yeah, that's about it. I'll let you guys have the last words. Um, and that's a wrap. Uh, again, thank you for having us. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's going it, it's been quite the journey so far, but I think I think uh, we're gonna do some great work in the future that a lot of people are really gonna enjoy. Definitely, definitely. Yeah.
Agreed. Appreciate all the support. Anyone that's helped amplify our voice, our message. Um, definitely greatly appreciate the love. Cool. We we'll need more of that. We need more love. More love. Definitely more love. <laughs> cool. But again, thank you guys.